It's Daddy's Game Time. Oh, gee, it's that time of the week again, folks. It's Monday night. You're live with Daddy's Game Time. What's going on, everybody? Leo here with Rick and Francisco. What's going on, guys? This is your family-friendly show about gaming, movies, pop culture, and some technology, all from a daddy's perspective. And it's all brought to you in a nice little family friendly package. Woohoo! It's got that nice little bow on it where you you know like you pull it and it just comes off so nice. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of our daddy's game time hearts. <laughs> we have we have been no heart. growing. Ever what? so growing. What? Yeah. It's like somebody <laughs> it's like gave us that uh that uh muffin from from what's it called? That that movie. <laughs> What? Uh, what? Alice, <laughs> Alice, what are you talking Alice about? Alice in Wonderland. Okay. And she just started growing and growing and growing. Oh. And so I'd like Wasn't to thank you guys. Cookie? Like our, our viewership numbers, I'm very excited. We've been growing. We've had a lot of positive responses yeah. due to our viewership. Rick, what's going on with your arm? It's cut off. Yep. There it is. Oh, oh. <laughs> you see how they push me off screen over here? Man. It's the only way. Man. It's the only way you're going to learn, Rick. It's the only way. <laughs> Chop it off my arm. Yeah, so I had a good week. How about you guys? Happy Easter. I had an awesome week. Happy Easter. Happy Bunny ears. Happy Easters. <laughs> <laughs> a little uh, a little reference to one of my favorite movies of all time. What? Nacho Libre. Ah. Easters. Easters. <laughs> Easters. What was so, that line where, where, where the guy goes? They're talking about the food, right? And he goes like, "I, I, I had diarrhea since last well, Easter's." <laughs> yeah, Why can't but we just have a the, salad. It's the way he says it. It's, <laughs> it's just so funny, man. It's, Easter's. I love it. Love it. One of the cult classics, maybe. Is Nacho! it a cult classic? Was it even successful in the theater? I, I don't know. I don't think I don't it was know. that Let successful. Me know. But it's it's kind of one of those like Napoleon Dynamite type films where it's very popular. Oh, very absolutely. Famous, it's absolutely one of those. When you really think about it, like. Why the heck is this a good movie? Yeah, it's, it's like just, it's it's just kind of it dumb just, on purpose, but it's it still hilarious. Is. It just it is what it is. Shout out to a boy Sal, to Fernando Altamirano watching us, and um, and that's it right now. It's <laughs> the beginning right of the now. show. We we expecting to get a lot more people in. Uh, we are shooting we are shooting live, live right now. So any of your comments coming in through Facebook, we are we viewing them. them. We see them, and we will try to shoot us uh, a question. We'll we answer. will be trying to communicate we'll back try. and forth, do a little bit of that back and forth stuff, uh, if it's relevant. Yeah, I know sometimes we get inappropriate stuff coming through, <laughs> and yeah. uh, it kind of throws us for a curveball, but... Family-friendly show. It's a family-friendly show. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Not and that we don't like you. And if you want to sponsor <laughs> us, if you want have something <laughs> you want us to to mention on the show for you, you got to call our business line on the private so we can get this all set up beforehand. Sorry, no no free uh, airplay while we're on live. <laughs> Leo's cracking them whips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You hear that, Pepsi? You hear that, Coke? <laughs> There's a lot of Coke. Coke. <laughs> the refrigerator. <laughs> little reference to an old com- TV commercial I used to see. 85 bears. So what's going on, guys? Yeah, what do we got for this week? Oh, man. I've been playing Zelda still and still <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, it's it's almost like a losing battle. Like, you can't you're win. You're ruining yourself. I am. You cannot. <laughs> you're not going to be able Rick, to formulate. Like l- l- Let me just tell you something that you don't understand about Zelda. I haven't played Horizon Zero Down. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear it's great, and I will probably eventually, down the line, when I f- finally get a PS4, will play it. Or get the get the remake on PS5. There you go. Something the like a- that. H H D version. <laughs> um, but do Q H D. Okay, so this Easter weekend, I had to double down on my Easter. Zelda. Double because, down. Yes, because basically, um, I hadn't really made that much progress. I'll be honest with you. I've been exploring most of the time. I've been just enjoying this world. This is the first time in any Zelda game up, where Ken? the world is Ken? just so massive, dude. It's so okay. Cool. We've been watching the videos ever since the game was announced for the Wii U. Okay, and we've been seeing that at at the beginning, I thought this is too much. I mean, you see. So much land, so much environments, and and I thought to myself, what's the point? You know, it's just too massive. Mm-hmm. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And I remember if we go back in a few shows, 
last year when we started reviewing the videos, I even mentioned it like this is just too much. I don't think I'm gonna enjoy it. I've been playing this and it's just oh my god, like I it's overwhelming, yes. but at the same time it's like, oh my god. It's like <laughs> why did they even think of this? <laughs> like uh, like who's thinking of this? Just a little bugs, okay, flying around and it's it's just I mean when you're climbing the mountain, we've been spoiled, guys. We, that we've been is, spoiled. That is the best, the best time ever in the game is when you're climbing, because you yeah. get this adrenaline rush, like, oh my god, I'm not gonna make it, I'm <laughs> not gonna make it, and then you give that little push where you jump, like, oh my god, I made it. So you get really excited. It's like, yeah, you gotta invest in stamina, yes. or else you'll end up like Mufasa. <laughs> well, m- well, I, that was an awesome clip. My my game got reset. Uh, my progress got lost. Oh no! Not a big, not a big deal, not a big issue because, like I said, I wasn't really that far into the game. So on Easter Sunday, I played for about four or five hours, and I'm almost back at the point where I was anyway. Right? Because I've been doing hearts, and I'm on a mission to gather hearts. Nasty. I found the sword, the master sword, and I couldn't get it. I had to read online why I wasn't able to get it because I really want that sword. Because yeah. everything else breaks. Every weapon you have breaks. Except that sword. So before going on with my quest, I found out that you need about 13 or 14 hearts to be able to pull the sword out of the stone. And that's been my mission all along. <laughs> finding those shrines and getting getting hearts. Yeah. That's cool, man. It's a cool little story. But that's kinda like um I hate those moments where you you just like your progress. Is just completely gone. Yeah. I remember, uh, uh, actually, this happened me, to me a few weeks ago. Um, I migrated some of my video games over from PS4 to PC because I got a gaming laptop. Migrated. One of those games was Grand Theft Auto 4. I think I had, at the point, invested, invested somewhere around 30 hours into mm-hmm. the um, storyline mission. It's not all just go 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 on storyline for me i always get the subtra- uh, distracted and i go off and do some random stuff but uh that's why it takes me so long mm-hmm. to finish yeah i, I like exploring too. And, but this time i was i was dead set on finishing the storyline you tell me it's excellent it is and it's really good. i ended up Stop you know it. migrating over to pc can't migrate over the the save file. Oh, I man. got rid of my PS4 copy of my game, and the rest is history. Haven't touched storyline <laughs> since then. Of course, I've been also playing Horizon Zero Dawn and Zelda like a madman, which it's insane. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just stick to one game. But I'm, I'm too far in. I'm hooked. I can't have one without the other. <laughs> it's it's you know it's terrible. I have a problem. I, I speaking of Zelda, <laughs> little segue here. One of the things that got, got me really upset is that I have a few Amiibos. I was never big into the Amiibo scene, okay? Um, I like a few of them because they're really well made. They're really neat figurines. Mm-hmm. And as many of you may know, these Amiibos come with a chip that you can use in your games to unlock special stuff, special features, special suits, different color uh, characters. So I find out that in Zelda... You don't have your classic green tunic like he does in the previous games. You actually have to find different clothing uh, depending on the areas you're about to explore. It may be too cold. It may be too hot. And and so it's appropriate for you to wear different clothing. Right. Uh, One of the amiibos that I have is a 30th anniversary 8-bit Zelda amiibo link. It's it's an 8-bit. Little squares. uh, Pixelated. This uh, amiibo particularly gives you the green tonic from a link to the past. I want that so bad. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> I have the amiibo. <laughs> and I remember from Disney Infinity, um, you can just grab the figures and put them on the platform that it comes with, and it activates them inside the package. Guess what Nintendo did? <laughs> Nintendo added a little sticker covering the nice. chip so oh, that you man. are not able to scan it in the box. You have to open up that sucker to be able to scan it if that's what you want yeah, to do. Yeah, I, I have a few Amiibos. that I, I actually open them up and stuff because I get them for my kids. Mm-hmm. And then I just borrow them every for once in a while kids. when I actually am playing my games. Right. And um, and yeah, that's one of the first things I notice when I unbox my Amiibos. Um, the little sticker. They have, it's not really a sticker. It's just a like a little cardboard mm-hmm. piece on one end of it, it's <laughs> just it's, thick it's enough lined to block the connection. It's, no, it's lined, like aluminum. It's lined with like a piece of aluminum that blocks that 
that whatever type of the transmit whatever signal, signal that is trying to so transmit over if, to the device. If you were able to get that tunic, is it like universal? Like, can you use it anywhere? I think so. I think so. I think that's one of the things. That, and not only that, but every single amiibo ever made gives you things within the game: food, uh, weapons, uh, yeah. ammunition, things like that. Guess what I discovered this weekend, guys? And you may take this however you want to take it. it With a grain of salt. Yeah, it may not be exactly, I think it's borderline legal, okay? So <laughs> basically. That's kind of a Christopher Walken little accent man, there. Borderline. Uh, basically, Ooh. what happens is that borderline. there is an app for your phone if your phone is NFC enabled. You know, you use NFC to make payments over your phone, things like that. Well, apparently they sell clean, clear NFC tags, if you get this app and some Amiibo files, you can make your own Amiibo NFC tag. Amiibo and files? You yes. get this. This is a family friendly show, Francisco. You get and this app. Yeah. You get this file. Yes. Uh. Exactly. <laughs> Amiibo tag. Uh, so when you press that tag that you purchase legally, let's, let's say legally, um, let me explain how it works first. The app, you can scan an Amiibo and then later on pass it on to this empty tag that you can later on use to use it as an Amiibo. Mm -hmm. And this is a good way to save your Amiibos, basically. Like, if you don't want to open them, you just scan that tag and it's as if you were... I uh, just imagine just somebody it. like at a Toys R Us somewhere opening them all up, just <laughs> going down the aisle, saving them on their phone <laughs> and then just leaving them there and walking away and, and there's nothing... But, I mean, and that's that. what I'm saying borderline. I right. Mean, you have to be responsible how yeah, to use I mean, this. That, 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 I mean, going to any store, opening up a package is... Mm -hmm. It's the same right. thing as burning a CD in... It's then, you basically, know. I would take it as along the same lines as ROMs. Mm -hmm. If you own the original, mm -hmm. you can have the ROM. Exactly. There's no issue there. Kind yeah. of deal. All I want to do is be able to scan my Amiibo and keep it in the package. <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo, come on. After a while, Punch is going to have this like case with like all these little paper tags. Like, oh, what you got? <laughs> what you, I got one. <laughs> Let me tell you, Amazon, you get a 24-pack for twelve ninety nine. Nice. I should be getting it by Wednesday. Nice. I will let you know. Oh, you're going to do it. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Dude, I need to. I mean, I don't want to open Are up my Amiibo. Are you sure you want to tell Nintendo if by out next there? If by next Look, week don't you don't know. see Pancho on the show. Don't <laughs> Look, no. I'm scanning the Amiibos that I own, that I legitimately paid for, that I want to keep in the package. That's the only ones I'm using. I don't see All I have that. to say is Easter weekend just passed. One of the things that kind of sticks with me every time Pro I controller. see the passion plays <laughs> is that moment when Pancho's pilot Side washes his Side hands job. and he says, I am free of this action, you know? And, Pro um, controller. So Francisco, Rick, and I we're free <laughs> of okay. this action that you're taking. Next week, if you don't see Pancho on the yeah. show, okay. yeah. So is Nintendo still send us those products <laughs> eventually if you want to sponsor us and hey, you want I a have little no bit amiibos. more exposure with us? I have no amiibos. You can go. I don't care about them. <laughs> you, you can go online and there's a lot of resources showing you how yeah. to do it. I saw uh, I saw a video of some guy actually yes. doing it. Nintendo is but not... But he cuts it off and says, I'm not going to show you how yes, to exactly, actually do exactly. this process. And, and, and I don't know how yet. I know it can be done. I just, I'm going to experiment with it. But like, like Rick is saying, this is not something Nintendo's penalizing mm -hmm. because uh, you're technically not stealing. You're backing up what you bought legally. What you should have already bought. Exactly. Well, we all know how Nintendo feels about that also. <laughs> So yeah. we'll see. Today we have a really great show. We're going to get to it shortly, uh, but I just want to go through a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about. This week happened um, Star Wars Celebration. We have a lot of Star Wars news, including a brand new Star Wars trailer. We had Yay. we had um, a brand new trailer for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which part one is one of my favorite games that come out in recent Yay. memory and um also we had um something happen at the box office that was pretty historic with the new f8 movie that was released the fate of the furious and um fate. also uh we we have a little bit of uh logan uh impressions to give you as well francisco and i had already seen the film so i don't know if you did rick nope, i haven't no? seen it yet. still haven't seen it oh man well, i'll get we're on it guys giving you a, a, i'll get on it like a sort of mini review slash impressions of it uh before we get right to it though i think this is worth noting um we've been having people write in uh shout outs to jose rodrigo fernando uh fernando 
Fernando, my nephew from Mexico. Primo. Oh, never mind. Yeah. So well, we, we, we always say, we always say primo. You know, it's, <laughs> it, it just we, it's our so, way of so saying titled. like your family. You know, right. whether whether you are a primo or not. Primo. But um, primo. It, he he wrote he wrote in and he wrote my favorite memory that was that you showed that game to me. What game? The game he's talking about, I, I do believe, is Zelda mm. Ocarina of Time. Oh, dude. Back in, back in those days, I think not, I think the year was around 98 dude. or maybe 99, where I I went to Mexico, visit the For fam, the last visit time. the fam fam, and, um, and everybody was playing this game. Everybody was playing Ocarina of Time. Yeah. But back in those days, they didn't have a Spanish track right. for Zelda. Mm-hmm. And, and he just did confirm it. It was Zelda mm. that he's talking about. Back then, there wasn't Spanish text for these games. Right, like right now, you it just download a patch and mm-hmm. you get them in your, your native language. So there we are. And by this time, I had already beat the game numerous times. And so I, I kind of sort of knew where everything was and and knew what how, how to get there and, and all, all the little things nuances of that game and i remember everybody was playing it and at every cousin's or nephew's house that i went to they would say like hey have you checked out this game yet and i'm i would just be like yeah (laughs) i I, I beat it a few times (laughs) 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 so so um so there they are and i i have to like just man mad props to all you people uh in other uh, countries that are taking the time to learn our language. These these people had uh, Spanish to English dictionaries <laughs> playing <laughs> the that, Legend that, of Zelda. That's dedication. Me, that was me. That's they, dedication. And they had their little notebooks on the side where they were writing word for word. The literal translation, not the, mm. the meaning of it, right. but just the literal translation of what every little thing said. And I just... I felt so good to know, like, wow, I am truly um, blessed to have the knowledge that I do of, of two languages. Knowledge is power. If you guys uh, are are wanting to quit, like, a secondary language class that you might be taking in high school or whatever for stick all with of you it. watching us out there, stick with it. It's power. It's it's something you'll have it's for knowledge. the rest of your life. It's knowledge. Stay in school. We, I think we need that little... These people were stuck on, a, on entry-level problem Mm -hmm. that it starts started right away in the game within the first maybe couple of hours of playing because they don't know what to do they had been stuck on that for a few days and (laughs) just because they didn't understand what the clues were to get whatever it was and what they were stuck on they were talking i believe it was to like a fairy or something and the fairy was telling them some story about the past but they were looking for a clue about what to do in in this (laughs) place and I told him, like, oh, no, that's nothing. Just ignore her. You don't have to do this. <laughs> and Look, then go over here. Go over there. Go over there. Blah, blah, blah. And, that's and how then got, comes got along it, Leo. Just got it all rolling through. Spoiling it all. Unlocks all these no. mysteries. Oh, we played. It was so much fun. I love playing with the kids, with, with the, my cousins that were my age, and even a few that were older than me as well. It was like, hey, Leo, how do you do this? Oh, you could just go here, run there, get the sword, get this, get that. Boom, boom, boom. Get it done. Speaking bum, bum, of bum. Nintendo, that was a Leo, lot of fun, man. Speaking of Nintendo, yes. should we get right into that? What's that right there, Rick? What do you have Actually, there? Actually, well, I guess we can get into it now that now that you already pointed it out. NES. We classic don't have a video medium. roll. It's at, it's at the very end. Of the, the very uh, end. I'll. I'll, I'll you want to skip to it? We'll throw a little. A little I, video I don't know why you. you guys did this. <laughs> Puncher's fault. What I have here in my hand. Well, this is the box. I already took out the, the actual console. That's why he's beating NES, with it. I, NES classic. Mini. That's it. Yeah. Classic. This is the US version. If by now you have not already purchased one, good luck is all I'm going to say. <laughs> this guy right here. You got it? Oh, you got it rolling. So, retail, what is it? 60? 59.99? 59.99. 59.99. Plus eBay, like 150, 200? No, it's more now. Dude. More it's now? More oh, now. Yeah. Oh, now that it's been. Well, well, let's tell them why. Why is it more now, Pancho? It has been confirmed by our pals over at Nintendo. Uh, it's been discontinued. Uh, mine, ni- mine and Leo's pals, not Pancho's ni- pals. Your, your <laughs> exes. <laughs> Nintendo has said, has made a statement that this is the last month that retailers will be getting supplies of the NES Classic. Now, mind you, back in December, 
I think it was December, January. We told you, we heard the rumors that March, mid-April was going to be it. Told you so. And everybody, everybody's like, no, that's not true. You. It's just a big rumor, blah, blah, blah. And, and granted, we did say it was a rumor. Look at that. Turned out to be true. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Nintendo. Ninten Nintendo's been, in, been leaking a lot of rumors out. I, yes. I think they have, they have some disgruntled employees. Uncle Nintendo, Leo's Uncle Nintendo, beloved Uncle Nintendo, has said, thank you for the support, guys. Um, this was not meant to be an ongoing product. This was supposed to be a nostalgia uh, collector's item, and we're done. Uh, we're overwhelmed by the response, blah, 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 blah. But unfortunately, we have to stop production and focus on Nintendo Switch, basically. Basically, Did they're saying, we don't like money. <laughs> <laughs> Did they in any way indicate they were done with this version and not going to be moving on to like a version they were two pretty clear. with like 30 different games no. or anything like that. No, they, they, were, they were very clear, clear that they want to move their efforts over to just their dedicated power to console. console which and is, they so also, I mean, they do have a Super NES Mini in the works as well. But you better you believe so? it's going to be similar to this. Yeah, they've talked about it. So they, once they it comes out, get it. Because yeah. this is definitely going to become a collector's item now. They, I mean, it wasn't an official announcement, but w uh, in conversations and interviews with the, the people at Nintendo, they've mm -hmm. mentioned that they, they do look forward to releasing one in the near future. Because I was thinking that, yes, okay, they can release an any uh, SNES Super Nintendo Classic. Um, they will work with that, but then they're going to expect them to release a Nintendo 64 Classic, and who knows if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, we're talking about bigger cartridges, bigger uh, memory, but then when you get to the <laughs> Wii Classic, I mean, you know, GameCube Classic, that's when you start getting to that territory that they're expecting you to release mm -hmm. the next classic console. Well, that's why I'm a little surprised. That I would imagine that maybe, I don't know, 10 years from now, they revisit this or maybe the next one or, you know, yeah. as technology comes along, there are better improvements and there's more things that they can do. Well, you have until the end of this month just to have, what's the date today, guys? It's the so hit up 13, every, every retail store. Ask it, anybody have they have they seen them or heard? Because and get one for yours truly <laughs> right here. <laughs> it's the 17th of April, so you have about 15 days, two weeks to yep. maybe but find realistically one. though, I mean, and I'm sorry guys, but if you haven't found one by now, you're probably not gonna get well, one. Well, look. you got at a retail store. You, at a retail store, you gotta look at the fact that uh, the Japanese one, the Japanese version, the Super Famicom, or no, the Famicom Mini. Famicom Classic, it's basically the same thing as this. It's just a different model, different uh, shape. And that one actually comes with two controllers attached to it. Right. Um, so that one has a, about the same 30 games as well. Uh, if you're into modding consoles, you can mod it as well. And you can get it in the U.S. from Amazon for about 100 bucks. So that's an alternative that you can probably think about. Other than that... Uh, Prices on eBay and Amazon for the NES Classic for third-party sellers just skyrocketed. Yep, yep three hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah, is the three hundred. That's I've right. Seen. Yeah. So what are we watching on screen? We're watching the trailer for Logan. Oh, Logan, dude. one of the films we just saw. Uh, I want to hear your impressions first of it because I had a lot of good to see about it and. I also have some criticisms for it. You always have criticisms, though, yes. Leo. That's, it wouldn't be Leo without criticism. Let's just say that. Yeah, there's no such thing as perfect. <laughs> I don't live in this world that everybody else lives in. I see things for what they are, and I call them out the way I see them. <laughs> so basically, Logan, I will tell you the first scene out of the movie. Uh, spoilers, I guess he gets um, asked, nicely asked by some uh, gang members to mind his own business. By Robocop. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and what does Logan do? He tries to defuse the situation, be calm about it, like, hey, guys, you know, please leave, blah, blah, blah. Come on, man. No, nothing happens. Uh, nothing of the sort that he was expecting. And then he gets the clothes out and... Pew, pew, pew. Now, pew, let, pew. Me, let me talk about this. When I say... Pew, pew, when we're watching the older X-Men Wolverine movies... You see him snipping and slicing and dicing, but you never see it past that. Maybe he's like 
on you never back. see blood exactly you and see if him you on his do back it's or like off off screen really wide wide shot of some this sort right here dude my mouth literally went when I saw him taking care of business. Let me just put it at that. I'm not going to spoil it any more than that. It is rated R. It's very, very violent and very, very gruesome. Um, you see things that you wouldn't expect to see in other X-Men movies and colorful language as well, which mm-hmm. was a colorful. shocker. Was Flavorful. a shocker. Um, I do have a bit of criticism about the gratuity, uh, gratuitous uh, nudity that was at one point. Uh, if you're taking your children, there's a, a spot in the movie where there's some nudity. Right. Uh, Is it predictable? Can, like, can you see it's coming? Yes. Mm, kind sort of. Sort of. of. But you think, why? Just because we have the R rating? It was, yeah, that's know? the same it's feeling like, I got. It, it was, just, well, was, it was uh, just there for the sake of yes, it being a rated R exactly. film. They did the same thing on uh, a Deadpool. Well, Deadpool is expected. No, Deadpool, yeah, it's uh, it's it, straight it, up radar. It I mean, when it's rated there. R, you no, figured. this was almost there. Like it had nothing to do with progressing the storyline. Uh. It was just kind of like boop, you know, and yes. that it was is. it. And, and you're like, yeah. really? Why? Like, I mean, what was why? the point? Yeah, it's like, exactly. Just because it's rated R. Yes. I mean, we already have the blood, the guts, mm-hmm. the violence, and the language. Was that really necessary? Yes. I don't think it was, but uh, they they added that in there. But that's not that's not my big criticism. Um, I, I, I kind of decided to look past that just because it only happened once and right. it was just a couple of seconds. Yes. So I was willing to forgive that for the sake of just giving the rest of the film a fair shot. Mm-hmm. Um, now, th- the gr- the movie was great. The action was great. And the pacing was great on it. Um, I thought the performances were great. My only gripe with the film is that the most the the biggest key part of this film was the part of um of Logan establishing a relationship with his daughter um spoiler I I think no no, no it's not a spoiler because you see them all been... through the trailer it's it's like call, they're together call, call me slow but I never thought he was his daughter oh tch, yeah. I, I instantly thought well from the beginning uh, yeah. they've already speculated that she was x23 plus yeah plus in addition to that there's Does that mean it's I mean daughter? we're not we're not looking clone. at that trailer but in one of the trailers I think there were three trailers released for this film you see her where she's slicing and dicing with with her, her hands. I mean, Similar mutant. You, you, Not you, necessarily you, mean you, it's his daughter. You might but be, okay, that's fine. You, you made your point. You might be in the right... You've already ruined it for argue. me, guys. That, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if yeah. you ruined it for somebody, you already ruined it. So, so. Um, so his daughter, to me, it was really obvious it's his daughter. Okay. I, I think you would be slow if you don't, you don't I, see I, that. I didn't, but, honestly. Um, but it's like they're Espe- trying to, especially es- when you see it from the beginning uh, and how she came about and where they, mm-hmm. where they came from, you're like, oh, okay. So there's no way it's his daughter. But then later on, you're like, okay, that makes more sense. Right. And the way they presented it, you're like, oh, okay. No, for me, from the moment those claws came out, I was like, oh, they're related. Most likely <laughs> they're related. There's a reason why they, got they were claws. looking for him and not somebody else. Mm. But um, anyway, that, that that's totally beside the point. <laughs> the point is here nor there. They're, they're trying <laughs> the to establish. It's a claw. <laughs> it's a claw. They're trying to establish some closeness some deep emotional relationship between a father and the daughter and it it progresses throughout the entire film but it just never gets to the point where it seems to hit an emotional chord it just seems like they're just going through the motions but it never there's never that one point where you just say like oh you know like there it is there's that moment and i think i personally um, I, I I really even wasn't looking for that in this film, but it was very very obvious that that's what they were pushing for, especially with the type of ending that it had. And um, once once it was all said and done and and, and it all ended, I never really saw them as a father and daughter. It just seemed more like they were like uh, companions in a bigger mission that they had to do which Did it that, finally that was part of it but the the big premise that they seem to be pushing f- forward from the moment that they came uh near each other was that father daughter relationship and it just never 
fully developed and flowered the way it should have. It, it just seemed like it was too but it, rushed, But it too makes pushed. sense, though, Leo, when you think about it, where she came from. I mean, it makes sense that there shouldn't be that attachment because of how she was brought up. No, I, I understand. It, it, it makes perfect sense. However, that's not what they were going for. They wanted that emotional moment at the end. And I can't talk about that emotional moment without really ruining it. But there was a moment at the end of this film that they were trying to get people extremely emotionally involved into it. And to me, it was I just didn't feel that connection. I was just kind of like, oh, it finally happened. Dude, that scene, blah, at, blah, the, blah. That scene so, at the farm, that was the whole emotional for me right there. Oh, the scene at the farm. Yeah. I See, I was even disconnected <laughs> from that oh, also. Wow. And I was just kind of like, like, you know what? Um, I, I, I was taken at still at that point. I looked past it and I was just <laughs> like, it's it's a movie about action and you know not not too much emotion into it but they kept pushing the emotion 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 that's what they kept pushing so at the end i was like okay if you're pushing this on me that's what i'm gonna judge you by and once i judged the film by by that aspect of it then it was just kind of like like okay that's that's (laughs) it the law (laughs) so so this is his ninth and last one and it and it's his last so Basically, you could speculate that he dies. You guys don't have to confirm or do anything about that to a spoiler or whatever. But did the movie at least give way into that there was going to be more to come from this genre? Or yes this and was no. Um, I mean, a, a definite yes, but no, no definite uh, conclusion. Right. I would say yes. yes. Like it, it's more. Can't like, really tell you without spoiling. It's more right. like a. There's more, but. Oh, you guys already spoiled it for me, but for the viewers. It's more of a, yes, there's more, but we're not sure if we're going to show you that more. No. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, like like it's... And there's yeah. a possibility. He has mentioned that if Marvel were to ever take the rights of the X-Men, he would love to come back and fight the Hulk. Oh, so he that, did say that. That's his thing, ah. yes. He wants to be in the Marvel universe. Awesome. So, yeah. so I would love Mel Gibson. He will reprise he's Mel Gibson's he's Wolverine with, with to Fox? fight the Hulk. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, maybe a younger Mel Gibson, but not not yeah. not this Mel Gibson, not yeah, anymore. Yeah. Um, kind of on a side note, Deadpool Tool Tool Two Tool. They have uh, an, uh announced who Cable. Oh, is, is who is be, it? Right? Yeah. No, I don't know. Our favorite, no, uh, no Country for Old Men. Really? Thanos. Josh no. Brolin. But he's. Thanos, he plays though. Thanos. I know. That's he plays what, Thanos. In that's what was surprising. One, uh, I didn't. MCU. It, it never clicked uh, on me that he was Thanos. But once I read uh, and I saw it, wait, this is Thanos. Mm-hmm. How the heck is he going to? But you know what? Well, in you reality. Know, you know what? You have to automatically when know Captain that, America has that been it's, human this torch. is Deadpool. And yeah. Deadpool is not in the MCU. That is Deadpool true. is part of Marvel stable, but, but he's not, not part the of the MCU. MCU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but but remember, I mean this. I mean this is kind of looking at it in the long run. Marvel, just like what they did with Spider Man, they could will join eventually in. try to get Deadpool because I, they know he's a good character. And see, mm-hmm. I, I understand. And they that will get Ryan Reynolds. And and I under, like, no I understand hesitation. that aspect of it as well. But uh, you have to also look at it like who is. Um, who is Josh Brolin playing in the MCU? Mm-hmm. He's playing some CG character. Yeah, no, no. For the most part, that true, would be okay. Yeah. That, would, that would be okay, okay. because you're I only going to see, gonna see really on. this mm-hmm. and n- nothing much more. All right. I'll yeah. see same, that. Okay. Same thing goes with Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool and mm-hmm. how he was in DC uh, Green Lantern, which I believe... He is in the run shortlist to reprise his, him. No, he his is. Role. Didn't he Didn't he agree that he said yes? He's really? Said, no, he said, he said he would like to, to it, reprise it's a that list. role. It's a chore list. Uh, so so that he can kind of redeem that mm-hmm. char- that no. terrible yeah. character that he played. <laughs> he is By in the, the run. I've never seen I've never seen the first yeah. one. Uh, but I heard it was it was pretty horrible. Yeah, so it's all right when you get past the horribleness. <laughs> when you put that to the when side. Does it end? You know, I mean it, there's a little bit of good. But I, I am actually I, I do want to see Logan, so I'll, I'll I'll get to that guys. I'll get to it all eventually. Right. Cool. Uh I do want to see Deadpool. Uh, two, I can't wait for that one because part one was pretty freaking. It was mm. funny. I liked it. I yeah, enjoyed it. That wasn't meant for me. It was, it was a all right. It was a meh. I thought it was funny. I think I seen it like three times already. Dude, shut up, Rick. Tino Bergio is watching. Alfonso's watching. Leanna's watching. What's up? up? Thank you for joining Dude. us. 
All right. Okay. Let me Star tell you Wars s- Celebration. Something mo- something new right here. Let me tell something you about this. I haven't this. seen. This is my first oh, time ever seeing it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I tell I'll let you again. watch it. I'll let you watch I, it, and I, then I'll I, talk uh, about it. I, I, s- I can't hear it anyway, so oh, just go ahead okay. and talk over it. it. It's okay. Okay. I will tell you, when the Force Awakens trailer was about to be revealed, I was excited. I was ecstatic. I was like, heck yes. The whole moment with Chewie were home, I lost it. <laughs> I watched this, Leo. And I'm not excited. You're not excited? Really? No. Uh, I watch this and I'm like, oh, God, more of the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, I and told j- you what I think about the Force Just Awakens. to clarify. You, you hipster. Out of the three, Pancho is like uber, <laughs> uber Star Wars. Fan. I, I, I love Star Wars. Star Wars I love Star I Wars. Um, but um, it's a good concept. We're seeing more of the. This Christmas. You know. Luke is probably going to train Ray, same Story as Yoda trained him. Uh, <laughs> this guy's sleeping. I don't know why he they even that. show that. Uh, that he's in a coma, I think. Um, Poe Dameron. I think Poe is one of the best characters out of the whole ensemble here. I like Ray. Uh, she has no emotion. She shows no emotion when she's concentrating into being a Jedi. That's that's cool. Uh, but the whole the, this doesn't tell us anything, which I guess that's the purpose of a teaser trailer. That's what this is. But when we saw The Force Awakens, we were just like, holy crap. The film, that's another story. But when you watch this, you're like, all right, okay, cool. Let's let's watch the full trailer and then make a, well, you're, a you're, choice you're based on that. You're talking about the time from last Star Wars, continuity-wise to the force awakens there was a huge gap okay no let me let me tell you something else rogue one when i saw that trailer i was like heck freaking yes <laughs> okay and uh, this is not doing it for me i don't know dude. No? what do you think i um i think as the years have gone by i've been been slowly more and more disconnected from the star wars franchise Episode 7 renewed that connection to me. Okay. I still really enjoy Episode 7. And as much as I enjoyed Rogue One, I tried to watch it the other day. For some reason, <laughs> I just couldn't stick with that film. I don't... I, I loved it when I went to see it the first time in the movie say, theater. You, you like were I, raving about it. Yeah, it was so awesome. It, and it was awesome. But the other night, it was actually like three nights ago. I'm like, okay, Star Wars celebrations coming up. Time to brush up on my <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> I put that movie on and like the first time ever that I'm going to see it since since it released in theaters and I was just like having such a difficult time <laughs> watching it and typically I have a difficult time because my kids are running in and out of the room and I got to do daddy duties with them and all that stuff Duty. but no this was once they were they were um, already in bed. They were uh, going to sleep for the night. It's daddy's pop, game time. Pop the movie on, <laughs> and I was watching it, and it just like I was just kind of like grab my phone, see what's going on on Facebook, uh, or whatever, you know. It, it just for some reason it didn't have that pull that it had the first time. It just felt kind of um, insignificant, knowing that they perish. What's, what happens? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, and well, like, you gotta you gotta definitely so, watch this trailer again, but with audio, obviously, yeah. so you can hear what. They're okay, saying, wh- what what did you think, Rick? They, I mean, I I'm a Star Wars fan. I like it, but I'm not like ah oh, Star Wars. Ah, oh, I don't go crazy over it. Like uh, pretty much like just like any other movie. But I thought it was it was kind of it gave you more questions than answers. Exactly, that's mm-hmm. what I mean. I mean, and and like I said, clarifying that's the purpose of a teaser. Just mm-hmm. give you a little glimpse, little taste. It gives right. you a taste. So, but rather than answering some of these doubts or questions that you already had or speculated about, it like added more. But when you think about it though, at the end of Force Awakens, you know what happens. Mm-hmm. She meets Luke and they're right. about to train. You already know that. And right. that's what they're showing you. <clears throat> so, you know, it's like... Uh, so yeah, they're showing you basically what comes next. Mm-hmm. But... The title, the red, the last Jedi, they still haven't given you any clues as to what they're talking about. Well, we saw the um, Kylo Ren helmet being crushed. Mm-hmm. That's a big indicator that I guess Kylo is going to be like, oh crap, getting meaner, madder. You see his expression mm-hmm. of being really mad. Um, I think one of the things that I get from The Force Awakens uh, to now is that Luke went into hiding, not because he was afraid but because he didn't want to kill his nephew. Right. So now they're going to face each other. Yeah, but did you hear at the end of that trailer where he goes, uh, it's time to, what did he say? 
For the last for, Jedi it's time for to the, disappear. For Jedi. the end or, or whatever. End of I the can't Jedi. remember the actual verbiage, but basically they say Mark Hamill as Luke was basically saying. That's what they're saying, done. but I saw another rumor saying that it wasn't Mark Hamill, but um, uh, Benicio del Toro, I think, the one saying that line. Mm. That it, same with the Force Awakens trailer when he's mm. saying, like, my family had it, you had it, blah, blah, blah. And then he, it switched into uh, Snoke's voice, mm. and you think it was still him. But so I kind of snuck it in there. Huh? Yeah. And what I'm getting, let's say that Luke, let's play devil's advocate and say that Luke did say that. I think he meant it in a way that they've been keeping the balance of the force, always being the good, wholesome, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, we're done. Like, we need to end evil, basically. So the way that I took it was that they were kind of basically hinting at the whole good versus evil was kind of all a lie. Mm. Like, mm. it's, okay. it's, it was. Well, not that it was a lie that the belief of the Jedi being the good right. wasn't all true. Okay. Something like that, basically. Well, this poster right here is the teaser poster that yeah, they released I, as I well. I wanted to talk about this. You can um, see the I, balance. I saw the trailer. Uh, I mean, I just saw the trailer, so I hadn't seen it before. I really can't, can't have too much of an opinion on it because I heard it without sound. Mm. But um, so I, I really... I haven't had that opportunity. I haven't given myself that oppor opportunity to be excited about a movie that's going to be released the holiday time. Um, but one thing I did see that I did that did catch my eye when I was surfing the internet earlier this uh, this week was the uh, poster. The poster. You you know I like graphic design. You know I love um, scrutinizing all the little details and anything that has to do with design and right, 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 know, right, photography and all that. Something very interesting caught my eye here, and I'm not, I'm not sure if a lot of people um, caught this as well. Um, as you see here, right behind us here on the screen, we have the original Star Wars poster with the latest Star Wars poster mm -hmm. for uh, Episode Eight. And um, one thing that caught my eye was notice notice the symbol in in her. In her, I, I can't even tell if it's really a lightsaber or if she's shooting a gun. I'm assuming it's supposed to be a lightsaber. Right. But the symbol that is cast inside the lightsaber with the halo surrounding it, mm. what does that look like to you? Can't really see it's too it, far away. It looks sort of like the Empire symbol, doesn't it? Like mm. that star. Okay. That star that they use. Maybe. Um. What do they call it? Not the resistance. And it may be just the starburst, it, but it, okay. It, it, kind of, <laughs> it kind of resembles that. And not only that, they're giving off that, that kind of evil vibe with the, the red logo, with the red picture on there. And now we have a little bit of a juxtaposition up against the original. If you look at the original, you have the villain in the background, mm -hmm. the heroes in the foreground. Right. So in this one, you have... What is it? Is it a villain in the the villain in the background, and the hero in the foreground, or is it the opposite? Who knows? That's gonna play with a lot of people's minds. That you could you could argue for it either way, and I think that's fantastic yeah. that they're doing this. Like I will tell like, you what I see, and mm -hmm. right away, and you know, as a Star Wars fan, as a, a long time Star Wars fan, I tell you exactly what they're going for. You see Ray holding the blue lightsaber. That's the Jedi's lightsaber. But it if turns you red. See, yeah, if you see at the top, it turns red. And you see Luke in the red. And you see Kylo in the red. Red, white, why? blue lightsaber, America. You know why? <laughs> because as we learn throughout this story, the history of Star Wars, it's, it just takes one step to turn into the dark side. Every single Jedi has stepped into the dark side. This is Ray's moment to turn into the dark side. Luke has been to the dark side when, he, uh, when the Emperor pissed him off. Kylo's obviously in the dark side. Rey, in the novelization of episode seven, went into the dark side when she was about to kill Kylo Ren. So this is what it's saying. It's a very thin line between being a Jedi and becoming a Sith. Boom. Boom, son. So, so it could be that there are no more Jedis because... And that's what I'm saying. It's, she's going it's, evil, um, dark. It's, it's, it's very... Um, up in the air. Yeah, you know? it it's is. It's up in the air, like uh, up to interpretation. Which I will give you that, Star Wars. You're keeping me interested, but this teaser just didn't do it for me. <laughs> yeah. So, moving on. So, we got... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's halftime! Whoa! Whoa. That, that was Whoa. a long first half, man. Seriously. 
happy. It's yeah. Supposed <laughs> well, it's supposed to be halftime, but halftime. we did things out of order today. It's time for Leo's Furious Five. That was a very epic introduction you had there. Leo. Yeah, well, you told me, right? Explosions. Our, our, some heavy, our background heavy literally. Ex- this isn't CG. It literally exploded. It's, it's on fire right now. <laughs> Woohoo! Put it out. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so E3 is right around the corner. E3 is coming up pretty soon, in about a month or so. And I was thinking to myself, Leo, what would be a good Furious 5 for E3 that's coming up? And I thought to myself, hey, who are the top five game directors of all time, in my opinion? Leo's opinion. Leo's opinion. My opinion. opinion. Yeah, that's right. So, so here we go. Let's get started right off the bat. There's a lot of honorable mentions, but there's so many. I'm just not going to mention them. Uh, but there's a lot of talented <laughs> people in the industry. Uh, so you don't matter. <laughs> so honorable, they're not going to be mentioned. <laughs> so honorable. <laughs> and uh, so here we go. Number five, Yu Suzuki. He's a legend in the, ar- the arcade industry. Um, he is well known for, for the Virtual Fighter series. And um, what, what's it called? Space Carrier? Uh, yeah. Uh, and also... Uh, Harrier. Uh, Harrier. Space yeah, Carrier. Yeah, yeah. And one of our fav- personal favorite. Shenmue. Shenmue. Yeah. One of our yeah. favorites, and he throws me Our favorite. Our I like, I like how a couple... Rick, you love Shenmue. Shut quite, up. quite a few <laughs> episodes ago, we talked about this whole Shenmue remake and whatnot. And these guys were like, oh, Shenmue. And that just, like, they're, they're just done. They just done shut up. We love it. Shenmue. Hey, we still love Shenmue. Shenmue! Shenmue! Anyway, <laughs> number four. John Carmack. Uh... This guy is one of those guys you don't hear too much about anymore in the games industry, but he revolutionized the game industry in the late 90s with titles such as Doom, and I think he was behind Wolfenstein. He's the guy that kind of revolutionized the first person. He paved the way for first person shooters. He's, I guess you could say, the grandfather, the godfather of first person (laughs) shooters, and he's a certified genius. Certified. Certified genius. Certified G. G. Pause for a second. Boss. Comment. Comment. When is it going to be Leo's Furious 50? Oh, God. <laughs> if we allowed that, <laughs> it would like literally like melt your face off. Look, I say for New Year's Eve. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> a New Maybe Year's we Eve. could do a recap. Maybe we could do a recap of the of the best. The best 50. Something. The, yes. Something. But, we'll think about but it. But right off the bat, 50 will just... Melt you. I mean, look at what happened to the screen over here. It's Explosion. it's dead. It's gone. No more show, guys. <laughs> so we have uh, at number three, Neil Druckmann. Get that rolling again. Neil Druckmann um, from the Uncharted series. Mm. He directed also um, the, the the Last of Us, and he's also in the project right now to work on the Last of Us film and also the Last of Us two. So he's a very busy guy, lots of lots of talent. He's uh, very revolutionary with his storytelling in video games. It has a very cinematic feel. Uh, his games have his signature in terms of the way the stories uh, progress and are told and the way they incite you and they pull at you and they get you all in on what you're seeing on screen. I think that's something that Naughty Dog has been able to pull off and no one else yet. So, Neil Druckmann, you're number three. Now, dos, the top two. The Wait, top did you establish? Guys. Are these are like from least favorite to most favorite? Or least just favorite to most favorite. All right. Yeah, you're number three. Middle. Number two, everybody's favorite, Hideo Kojima. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Metal Gear Solid himself. He I, I, has I still been know more in about the... the industry since the '80s. On the NES with the Metal Gear Solid franchise, working for, I believe it was Konami back then still, right? Konami. And then he revolutionized the way we play the game with the release on PlayStation original uh, with uh, Metal Gear Solid. Man, that was a masterpiece. That's the only way I play Zelda. And so then we have the whole slew of Metal Gear Solid games or Metal Gear games that he was behind that he it was it's his baby his invention and he just took it to a whole new level it's it's just what he has done for the world of video games he's had has influenced so many in the world of uh 
espionage and tactical games and what's, all this. What's uh, what's this that? Stuff. What's that latest game that we've only seen little clips of? Uh, with Remus on it, with Benicio del Toro oh. on it. Oh, I don't yeah. even Death think Stranding. it's really <laughs> Death anymore. Stranding with all the fish. Dead Stranding. Death. Death Stranding. With stranding. the baby I'm and. St- I'm yeah. so curious about what the heck. That's like an acid trip of a game. That's like <laughs> I don't think yeah. it's happening. I'm, uh-huh. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to happen and it's going to be wonderful. I guess and we'll hear more at E3. W- from what I understand, possibly? PlayStation 4 exclusive oh. Master Race. Oh. Hmm. So, number one, and this is this is the most obvious one. I, I, don't, Shiggy. Even, I don't even need it's that. Shiggy. Oh. Shigeru Miyamoto. Shiggy. Mr. Nintendo himself. The face of Nintendo. The guy that always does is like, hey, Shiggy, do you like such and such? And he goes, dude, I read <laughs> no, I read something that really caught my attention now that you mentioned that. Zelda originally was going to give you the option that when you're climbing a mountain to stab your sword into the rock and rest on it to gain more uh, huh. whatever it's called, stamina. Uh-huh. The guys went over to Shiggy. Shiggy's like, what? How are you going to stab a rock? And they're like, okay, well, maybe we can use like a little, you know, opening in between rocks. Yeah, like how many times can you do that? No, don't do that. <laughs> so he thinks, you know, he l- sees the logic between whether it can be done or not. Out of anybody. He just made it harder for you. I would, That's what he did. Out of anybody in the gaming industry, he would be the last guy I would go for realism <laughs> in the game. Well, it's but. Like, like, yeah. like, whoa, let's make this game about a gorilla throwing <laughs> barrels at a plumber, and the gorilla has a princess, and Donkey this and Kong. that. So, yeah, those are Leo's top five of the week. So you what did you think about those five? Leave us a comment. Leave us some comments. Let us know if there's something you would like to hear. Or if you have a favorite on director. the next show. Or, yeah, or anybody I may have left out. There were a lot of honorable mentions that I left out. This was a very difficult list to comprise, and... Um, we're moving on, folks. Moving on. Rick, tell us what we're looking at here. <sighs> Off the Wars heels of Celebration again. Battlefront 2. I got to admit, Battlefront 1, when it came out, I remember everybody was playing it. PS4 and Xbox. Uh, I liked it. I played it a bit. I had fun with it. And then like maybe about a month later, I was like, heck, I'll get it. I got it for the PC. And I bought it, and I played it for a little bit. And it's just been sitting there. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Well, you know, I this will tell you awesome. right off the bat, what I see in this trailer that already excites me is that there's a campaign mode. Battlefront 1 did not have a campaign mode. This one looks like it does. Yeah, so that's that's probably my biggest gripe with the original Battlefront 1 uh, so for I, the PlayStation 4. I think that's it's what they were basically going for. They got the good that came out of Battlefront 1. I... For some reason, I was thinking of a different title. <laughs> Battlefront 1, and then they said, let's make this better. I think that what EA, the publisher of this game did, or the developer, um, what EA we, what EA did was, um, again, I'm not even sure if it was EA or the developer or maybe a combination of both. Uh, what they did is they decided, hey, people are going to buy this game regardless of what we mm-hmm. do. So let's not waste all of our resources on trying to make... Um, uh, 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 I guess you could say like a meh game, game, but have all the bells and whistles on it. Let's make a really, really good gameplay mechanic. It's not great. It's not hardcore. It's not for the hardcore. See, Anybody can pick it up and start playing, and it's a great game. That's but exactly. what, what they did is they ended up just saying like, okay, let's just do the online. Forget about campaign mode. We'll do campaign mode for the sequel. Once everything right. else has been established. And they did it so well that now we have the sequel. Now they can go ahead and work on the campaign mode and, and get that done for all of us, like people like me that were clamoring for campaign mode. See, and but that's I'm exactly, happy that they did it. That's exactly what basically happened with Titanfall. When the first one came out, mm-hmm. it was an awesome concept. Which EA did that one too. It was an awesome concept. But when it came out, it just didn't hit. It didn't get that huge of a fan base behind it to play it and to keep going because around that time they still had Halo, if right. I remember correctly. That was still going on. And there was another uh, Destiny. Right. Both of those were out at the, around the same time. So it just couldn't really like 
hit hard right. into that fan base to get to get things going. I think the, so, the it's a different topic, but I think the fall of Titanfall, the biggest error was that it was a console exclusive for Xbox One, the original game, right? And but, also for PC, so it didn't get the exposure that a lot of people were hoping for. It didn't for. get the Plus max it exposure. Didn't, it didn't establish itself in in lore you know you that's need the a whole, story line that's to the whole create point lore that whereas star wars can get away with it because it already has well, it has a background to mm-hmm. it yeah but see that's what i'm saying they just kind of put something out there to kind of get people interested in going which they could have added to but they just kind of stopped at a certain point they just said this is it then titan titan titanfall <laughs> titan, 2 titan. came out and it was Mixed, way like better cradles over here titan then it was way, way better. It had its campaign. It had its multiplayer. It already had some background because of the first one. So those that already knew about it kind of continued. And for those that never played it, went straight to Titanfall 2. Mm-hmm. So it had much more fan base than the other one did. Another game that I have that I haven't played in a while, but it's it's fun. Both of these games are fun. Now, if this one is going to be anything like part one, but better, then I'm all for it. I'll more than likely give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So looks interesting. So and yeah. talking about the switch and this, somebody asked uh producers of uh Battlefront two if it's gonna be out for the switch. He responded with a that's a topic for another day. Oh. He did not deny it nor Cliff confirm hang. it. Uh, a lot of people are saying that obviously I think, the, I think that was being nice. Yeah, that's what that's what they're saying. Uh but mm. what they're also hinting at is that there may be like a tie-in story, kind of like a different game that could be related yeah. to this one. I would think that it's more of a maybe like the limitations of the system. They're trying to get it, right. but they don't know if it will. They, so they don't yeah, want to. They, say they yes need or no to yet. play more with the system, I believe, before they can actually. I make think an what they're gonna do is is they're going to take an uh, in a game engine that worked for uh, PS3, right. And they're going to uh, just slap on the skins from Battlefront 2 yeah. onto that game engine and just kind of transfer everything over and make it work that way. If they do decide to go for the Switch, which I think would be a smart idea at this point, considering that the Switch is uh, now officially the most the successful, one. The most successful uh, launch in terms of sales mm-hmm. of all time for any mm-hmm. video game console. So kudos to Nintendo. Uh, you were right. We were wrong when it came to that <laughs> stuff. But uh, we were not wrong when it came to all the mishaps of the Nintendo. Uh, they, they they do have a lot of issues. Still, still waiting for Lil's demands. For the Switch. My Joy-Con and, uh, was actually you, defective. You happened to be Real a quick. victim of that. Uh, I will tell you, though, it was very fast, very convenient the way they corrected this problem. Did you get it, re- did you get it back already? Yeah. I ca- Dude, I called him up. Uh, you know, we went to troubleshooting. The guy was trying to figure out what was wrong with it. They already know what's wrong with it, but I guess they want to identify the real problem if it's if something different. So, yeah, he's like, all right, yeah, you qualify for an exchange. Uh, he sent me a UPS tag. He's put it in a box, send it in to us, give us the uh, repair number, and we'll take care of the rest. I sent it in on a Monday. I got it back on a Wednesday. Nice. That's pretty Quick. good. Quick. Yeah, it was a pretty quick. good turnaround. You would have to assume they probably just have a bunch lying around, and as soon as they get that skew in, the other one's ready to go. It, it was mine. Mm-hmm. I, I made a little tiny mark. To, I don't believe to, you. To make sure Anyways, if it was that. <laughs> it was mine. So it, they, they literally they, fixed yours and sent it back. It. Yes, that's mm. what they did. Nice. So it was definitely some software, some patch that they just rolled out. I read on it. the internet, it's just like a p- little piece of foam they add to it. That's it. Foam? Foam. foam. Because what happens is that there's an interference between the Joy-Con and the actual console. So, little piece of foam fixes that. But what if that falls off? Hey, Nintendo fixed you're back, it. You're back to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining us today. This is the end of our show. Uh, I do want to thank you very much for all of your support. We do really appreciate it. We need it. And um, also, remember to check out our shop. You can see the link down below. We have a promotional uh, SKU going on right now, a, a little coupon code. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it, Francisco? If you go into our merchandise store, which is at daddiesgametime.com slash merchandise and enter that code right there, you will get free shipping worldwide in any item you choose. All right. Well, thank you so much. And until next time, I'm Leo with Rick and Francisco. It's Daddy's Game Time.
If you like what you saw, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also visit us at daddiesgametime.com or you can check us out at Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all at keyword Daddy's Game Time. Don't forget our t-shirts and merchandise at daddiesgametime.com slash merchandise where you can find designs inspired by pop culture, movies, and video games designed by Leo and yours truly. All your support is appreciated.